So I'm kind of already in the process here, but I wanted to catch this so that people can see. I'm gonna finish assembling the shock, but one of the biggest problems with this, first off, it's out of a 19 Polaris. It's the front track shock. And what happens, this I have in the other way. Let me move this here so that this can be seen. So what has been happening is because this reservoir body is not you know, permanently attached to the shock body itself, it's allowing this to move. The machining tolerance is too big. And so what's going on is this actually allows to come move forward probably another like three to five degrees. And this knob then comes in contact with the idler wheel and it snaps the knob off the shaft to the compression adjuster. So what I've done in this situation, the customer supplied me with a high low valve instead of just a single adjust. I rotate this back into position to where it belongs. But now the fix for this, which I don't have to show you right at this point in time, but high gear suspension of Ithaca makes a two piece um, round adapter, if you will, or a lock collar that goes around the snap ring. It has four Allen pointed set screws in it that bite into the body underneath and it keeps this from happening. Um, it's a very nice upgrade. I believe it's $40 retail. Um, you don't need to disassemble the shock to do it. You, take, you have to take the shock out of the machine because, I mean, you might be able to get creative and do it, but I highly doubt it. It's, it's easier to take out. And when it's out, you make sure the clocking is correct, which there's a flat surface inside of there that you can go in relationship to the body and the reservoir housing. Point to that flat spot right so there. So it's right in there. It, it is kind of difficult, but right now they're lined up. If it's not, you'll know. And you can, even with the shock under pressure, you can use a rubber mallet gently and actually get it to go back into the correct location and then put the lock collar. So I'm gonna finish, you know, putting this together. It's already done bleeding and I'm gonna charge it. You can see that. All right, so in this process here, we gotta just top off a little bit of oil. You wanna make sure that the piston's up at the top, maybe a quarter of an inch below in the threaded area. And usually, you know, set your floating piston height to whatever the shock calls for. In this particular case, it's I bottom it out, bring it up about a quarter of an inch. Oil's full here, like I said, and then you're gonna set the seal head. Oil is gonna come out, which you want, because you wanna displace any air that's underneath that seal head cap when you're tightening it. How tight do you know, need to go with that? It's well, to a, be completely honest, is it a torque spec? There is a torque spec. Um, and you know what? I don't know this particular shock off the top of my head, but honestly. A hard ugga dugga. Uh, yeah, you can, you can feel. Obviously, you're looking not to get any oil leaking at that point, right? Oil will spit out at this point, but once the shock is cleaned off and it's charged, yeah, you don't want to see any oil leaking out of anywhere. You can have a little bit of residual, like if you push the shock in and it returns, you might see like a like Film. a mark. Yeah, that's all normal. Okay, um, you just obviously don't want to see leakage. Um, <clears throat> next thing is we're going to put the charge cap on. Some have a, like a snap ring style, just a round ring. This one has an actual snap ring. Show us in your hand. Okay. I like to, as well, <clears throat> push the shock shaft down. Two things for that. One is, when you're charging the shock, as this is coming up, if there's any air still stuck in there, it'll like kind of bounce or make noise and you'll know. And obviously then you got to start over. Um, 
The other thing too is, is that if this didn't have a reservoir and this is just a single tube shock where the floating piston was inside of it under a cap, if there was a problem with the floating piston height, you would hit that and know that it's incorrect. So it's just more of like, um, a, I don't know, tuning tool. It's just more like, so you don't, you know, go through the process of charging the shock and know that it's wrong. So at this point you could stop, take it back apart, fix what you have wrong and reassemble. Now we're gonna charge the shock. This particular shock and a lot are different, but these take 200 PSI. Another thing here is, so I charged this at 200. You saw that the shock shaft came up nice and smooth. Um, no issues there. We're gonna clean this off in a second and we're gonna check it. But one thing I like to do that I've seen that most people really don't do, and maybe they catch it when they're cleaning the shock, but I always use soapy water on either the reservoir cap or the charge port, wherever it's located. Because this is a very common issue that the nitrogen will leak all out of and you won't have any oil leaks or anything like that, but if you lose that nitrogen charge, your shock oil will overheat and fade and you'll have issues. So nitrogen, one of the biggest things with nitrogen, everybody kind of gets, you know, confused or doesn't understand it, but you have a floating piston inside of there that separates the oil and the gas. You need nitrogen pressure against the oil. That pressure, is what keeps the oil from one overheating and then cavitating, which means getting spongy and foamy inside of there. So that's highly critical. Um, snowmobile shocks, ATV shocks, it's usually anywhere between two and 300 pounds of nitrogen is what's called for. So the soap is only showing you leaks for your nitrogen? Yeah, just making sure that I have no big bubbles, anything like that. You would see it bubble up because of the soap? Yes. So right now we're we're good there. Just gonna wipe that off. Get this set screw inside of there. Okay, we're putting that set screw. Another thing to keep in mind here, and I just want to touch on this because this bit me, is when this all occurred of what I was describing earlier, where this rotated and this broke off. This adjuster assembly was a single adjustment, which meant just low speed. The customer supplied me the new valve, which is now high and low speed. Well, in order to put this in, I had to remove both knobs. And in the process of that, they put so much red Loctite on the center Phillips head screw that it snapped off on me. And it took me probably 45 minutes yesterday and they to get that Polaris. Uh, Walker Evans. Oh, okay. Um, you know, they supply Polaris, but yeah. whoever did it put too much Loctite. So what I'm ex what I'm trying to have a prevent is you have to warm that up. If this has to come apart, well, even to install it new, that has to come apart. You have to heat that up. But you have to be gentle, obviously. There's rubber O-rings inside of there that you could damage. So heat gun, blow dryer, something like that. I wouldn't use a flame. You wanna get that warm so you can get that out, otherwise you're gonna have an issue. So we have it charged, I'm gonna wipe it down. Everything so far looks good. Another good thing is to, you know, clean it with some simple green or some kind of like soap and water and um, get it nice. And then just let the thing sit out. If you have time, let it sit out for, you know, half an hour, hour on a piece of paper or something like that, or on a towel that's clean, and you'll know if you have any issues. And uh, a lot of times too, if I even question that there's an issue, I will stick it in the shock dyno and I'll let it get up to, you know, 150 to 200 degrees, let it cycle, and uh, to verify that there's no issue. So that was just a quick, 
you know, assembly of this Walker Evans. This one came in a 2019 Axis. Um, 800, 600. It does come in other models, but I don't know those other models. I believe it's 18, 19, and even 20. So you have to be cautious of this. The newer ones, they change the design, and this is not an issue anymore. But in those few years, you really wanna make sure. And this is what I was talking about with the two-piece lock collar goes over the snap ring, and it pinches into the aluminum. Hopefully that gives you a little insight on that, and uh, we're gonna have more to come here uh, sometime soon on some other different shocks, and uh, we'll get into maybe some vacuum bleeding, run some things in a dyno, letting um, explain more like the shock valving internally, things like that. So thanks for watching, appreciate it.